God damn it, are there a lot of epistles. Hey, we're, we're going to knock out a couple more tonight, but I feel obligated to apologize in advance to you for Paul being such a boring, repetitive fuck. I mean, sure, the New Testament is tamer, but I am dying for somebody to chop up a fucking concubine or something. Instead, we get Galatians. The story of Paul hearing that the Christians in Galatia were talking shit about him and setting him straight, and talking even more about what Christians do and don't have to do with their dicks, pretty much. <laughs> Awful. It's absolutely – imagine, like, the Pope sent a mass email to all the dudes in Turkey asking for a penis-related favor. That's the approximate <laughs> right. tone of what's happening. That's the premise for a book. Pretty much. And, of course, it just wouldn't be the babble without the help of the lovely Lucinda Lucian. So, Lucinda, what did you think of Galatians? The only things that's better than is Ephesians and rape. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Unfortunately, something tells me you're going to have to adjust that statement the further into these epistles we get. So, uh, why don't you start us off here? All right, so the book starts off with a quick reminder that Paul is Rick James, bitch. He gets the perfunctory, yay, glory, be to God stuff, and then jumps right into how full of shit the Galatians are. Yeah. Yeah, and it got to the anti-Semitic stuff a lot faster than you'd expect. Right. Yeah. So, hey, Galatians, it's Paul. So you guys all remember real God, creator of the universe, to whom be glory and forever and ever, amen? Yeah, I definitely told you about this. Anyway, I talked to him, and he wanted to let you know he's all about sending you some grace and peace. But then I heard you're doing Jewish stuff again. What was the one thing I made so clear? No more Judaism. And, well, and he uh, stumbles right out of the gate, too. He's just like, how dare you embrace another gospel? I mean, not that there is another gospel, but, you know, if there was, how dare you embrace it? Because there's only, you know, the one, and there's the one that I had. But how dare you? So there isn't another one. If you've, been, you've been tricked into thinking that there is another one, that there isn't. And for that, fuck all of you guys. <laughs> and then he reminds everybody that the stuff he says doesn't come from humans. Mm -hmm. It was revealed by Jesus. And in fact, it was so revealed by Jesus that even if Jesus shows up to reveal something different, this revelation trumps it. Yes, exactly. He <laughs> preemptively said that Jesus is full of shit if he says anything right. else later. And then we get yet another account of all of Paul's travels, and he's basically just talking shit with it. He's going, yeah, you know, while you guys were pissing around in your shitty little province in Asia Minor, I've been rolling around the whole ancient fucking world, chilling with celebrities, chatting with apostles, you know. So <laughs> clearly you guys don't know shit. And this is where he starts making shit up about his trip to Jerusalem to use as proof that the Jewish rules don't count anymore for Gentiles. He says, mm -hmm. listen, when I went to Jerusalem with Titus, he's the, the Greek dude with his entire penis. <laughs> yeah, the Jewish elders didn't even try to cut his foreskin off when we were there. And now, I know what you're all thinking. You're about to ask, why did he have his dick out in front of the church elders <laughs> in Jerusalem? <laughs> you're going, funny story, funny story. Some heathen dick spies infiltrated our camp and got a look at it. I don't know what happened. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm, I'm not making that up. That's really what it says in Galatians 2.4. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's about heathenist dick spies, foreskins, and the enslavement of Christians. But the church down the street from us in real life, seriously, they think that passage says, God bless America. Yeah. That's what it says on the side down the street. Galatians 2.4, God bless America. Not... Even his dick spies, foreskins, nothing about slavery. Nope. <laughs> you gotta love Georgia. And then we really get to the meat of it. See, Peter's clearly rolling around saying one thing, Paul's saying something else. And after a couple of obligatory admissions that Jesus probably wouldn't have put Peter in charge of his church if he was a complete fuck up, Paul goes on to suggest that he's at least way more of a fuck up than Jesus realized. Yeah, and his argument here is so childish too. Basically, he's saying, they say I shouldn't eat with Gentiles, huh? Well, I, I saw them eating with Gentiles. They are the ones that eat with Gentiles. <laughs> you are. Yeah, you're yeah. blue, yeah. Uh, yes, the classic bunch of poo poo heads defense is on full display in chapter two. Yeah. But it is encouraging to see that even in the earliest days of the church, at least some people were recognizing the critical problem with their theology. That being, you know, it wasn't Paul, no. by the way. His opposition to common sense is as full throated as a Nigerian prostitute. But the Galatians. <laughs> We're clearly calling bullshit on the concept that being a good person is irrelevant as long as you believe in Jesus. <laughs> yeah, seems strange to <laughs> right. Seems strange to modernize to see somebody arguing so passionately against being a good person. Right. But damn it, if Paul isn't going to try. Right. This is where Paul explains. Listen, idiots. Living a life of morality as a Jewish person is a giant pain in the ass <laughs> compared to the faith in Christ shortcut we just right. set up. That's the whole reason we rigged it like that. Just take the shortcut. What also, are you talking about? Stop right. complaining. Right. Also, tiny little Ooh. thing here, but it's really worth pointing out. 
chapter 3, verse 13, Paul makes a reference about how Jesus is cursed by God because of Deuteronomy 21-23, uh -huh. which is very specifically a reference to people being hung on trees. Not crucified, and <laughs> definitely not crucified on crosses. He also says in the opening of chapter 3 that Jesus was publicly exhibited as crucified in Galatia. About 600 miles from Jerusalem. Right, yeah. Know. And it's not that his corpse kept. I mean, the guy resurrected. No. So it's not, no. no, he's just the savior, and that's how he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Mayor the footnotes in my Bible, by the way, try to reconcile all of this without admitting that clearly the crucifixion mythos hadn't really crystallized at this point. They say that Paul was probably referring to his own speeches about Christ's death as the public exhibition. That's the public exhibition <laughs> mm. of Jesus what? being crucified. It was like, so and ah. I guess the bit about hanging on the tree, by the way, they also said that that was probably a result of Galatians misreading the Deuteronomical law. Uh, you know, they, they fucked it up, not us. <laughs> of course, except that it was Paul writing this fucking letter, not right. the Galatians. Yes, exactly. They clearly... Stupid. They ignored that part. Also, I'm pretty sure this chapter – did I read this correctly? Did it contain a legal document that clearly gives Christians a piece of that big land grant from God to Abraham? Yes. So that, mm -hmm. that Jewish title deed from Genesis that they were talking about, it actually <laughs> came back up. But the Christians have a lien. It was, it was a really yep. smart move. <laughs> Also, next time you see a Christian talking about marriage being between uh, one man and one woman, cite Galatians 3.28. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Jesus Christ. Oh, there you go. So like it or not, guys, according to your book, all marriages are gay marriages, and you've been doing it forever. <laughs> I like the opening of uh, chapter 4, too. He says, liked it. basically... <laughs> Okay, so we can all agree that the children are no better than slaves, right? That, like, that's his premise. That's the precept he's going to build his point on, the fact that children are property that should be beaten with sticks. Mm -hmm. And the argument is just as cogent and convincing oh, as we've come to expect from Paul. Are we not like children? Are you not like the children? Am I not the child who bears the child who is the children? <laughs> Boom, motherfuckers. QED. <laughs> I think they lost a page at the printer or something. Right? <laughs> chapter 4 starts with Paul clearly mid-sentence. <laughs> about halfway through what sounded like a, a drunken argument about slave rape ethics <laughs> with, like, Kevin Smith characters. Like, really <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying, what I'm telling you is that as long as the kid's not 18 yet, it doesn't matter if the mom was a slave whore or the white lady. <laughs> so, you know, we're, make a we're, we're getting off track, though. We're getting, the, the point is the Jews are slave spawn, and we're the good guys. That's what the story of Ishmael and Isaac was about. Yeah. Dick, dick, Read your dick, Bible. dick, dick. And after four <laughs> chapters of rambling and caterwauling, we get to the point, which is, of course, their points. Apparently, the Galatians are telling people they still have to get circumcised if they want to be proper Christians. And Paul is saying, guys, if we keep telling the Gentiles they have to mutilate their dicks, we're not going to get any Gentiles. Right. right. It, it's a complex point because he also can't just come out and say thousands of years of penis mutilation was pointless. <laughs> really well, pointless true. would be the right word. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> So he has to do a delicate dick dance by telling everybody, look, you, you can do the dick cutty thing if you want, yeah, but cool. then you'll have to follow all those crazy <laughs> Jew laws. Right. And sure, lopping off your foreskin is all fun and games, but not being able to push the elevator buttons on Saturday is way more of a pain in the ass than you think it'll be. Just think about this, guys. <laughs> yeah, not that it requires a lot of finesse, but Paul makes a pretty good case for not getting your penis mutilated. <laughs> that true. he does, yes. He <laughs> felt like, kind of like one of those late night infomercials for Christianity. Judaism is the obsolete competition product. <laughs> right. like a clumsy rabbi in black and white awkwardly fumbling with an enormous Torah and like a machete. He's <laughs> day, bending over, can't make a banana peel sound effect. <laughs> glass breaking for no reason. You've tried biting it off. <laughs> tried slicing it off with a katana. <laughs> You've had a bearded Jewish man blow you. Nothing else. <laughs> we also get to see a bit more of Paul's temper than we've seen up to this point. He says, I'm not sure who keeps telling you to cut your foreskin off, but I wish they'd just cut your whole fucking dick off. Yeah, they, get yeah over he does with. say that. He does say that. Basically, he's like, I wish they would just castrate themselves. He also appeals to their sense of prudery. He says, hey, we can't just all go around like... Doing stuff that feels good, like getting drunk, fornicating, and chopping skin folds off of our <laughs> genitals, guys. That's great. <laughs> and then he wraps it all up by telling everybody to leave their cocks alone, reminding them that he kicks way more ass than all the other non-Jesus people, and reminds everybody not to bite each other. 
<laughs> yeah. so, quick wrap up for everyone, just in case I wasn't clear. We're offering better superpowers, no rules. <laughs> Keep your whole penis. There's no <laughs> downside here. You you guys heard what I was offering, right? Yeah, so uh, all supplies last. Nothing new in the whole mm-hmm. fucking thing, but if you thought Galatians was boring and pointless, let me tell you about Ephesians. Mm. Oh, hold on. My my script says skip to Revelation, are we not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I like where oh, your head oh, is, but no, unfortunately. Right so I guess because the older manuscript doesn't actually address the city of Ephesus, scholars of the past assume that this book was something of like a Pauline form letter that was sent to a number of different churches, uh, like a dear resident type of thing. But today, biblical scholars admit it definitely wasn't written by Paul and was probably all but copied from Colossians, which incidentally also probably wasn't actually (laughs) written by Paul. So we got like some dude copying off of some other dude that cheated, (laughs) pretty much. So... Apostle ghostwriter propagandists are bad at starting letters. 100% of the time. time. This time, the intro was an entire chapter, and it starts out kind of like this. Uh, So, uh, Ephesus, can't help but notice you guys keep existing. Well, I've been praying for you about exactly that to Christ Jesus, and obviously it's been working. So, (laughs) I guess what I'm trying to say is, you don't know me, but you're welcome. You're very well. <laughs> and now that we're acquainted, I'd like to continue with a condescending letter for oh, six more chapters. This whole book is basically biblical lorem ipsum. <laughs> it's, it's just a bunch of rambling oh. about Jesus and dick mutilations with no references to any specific issues or places Nothing or happens. problems. No. Or, yeah, you, you, you read on TV. You read. <laughs> no, no. Well, and, and, Nothing happens. And worse, in I, I think there was only a total of like three periods in the first two chapters. Right. Oh, the, I the, hate the, that. The, the, <laughs> SV does you the favor of adding punctuation, but I guess in the King James, the whole fucking yeah, book no, is one sentence terrible. long, pretty much. <laughs> exactly. So you, you can tell they had a target audience that included Jewish people at this point, but it seems like the writers definitely weren't very happy about it. You know, like one of the bosses had just clearly told them they had to throw in another compliment here in chapter two. So they went with something like, the Jews murdered our Savior to bring us all together in a state of unity <laughs> through Jesus and the Jews murdering our Savior. So thanks to the Jews... <laughs> For knowing their role, who, by the way, for a limited time only, can convert to good people for no money down. <laughs> we'll pay your first three months. These have to go. <laughs> As you read it, it's really hard to believe it took so long for biblical scholars to knock this one down as fortune. I mean, it's like, it's as if it was like the blatantly different writing style isn't enough of a clue. The third chapter opens up by telling us that this is definitely Paul writing this, and we should have no doubt of that since I'm definitely me. Who says that? Right. And considering you're still reading this awful letter, you must be aware that I, Paul, was given the new rules by God through divine revelation. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not going to be easy. We're all going to need to take up the white man's burden <laughs> with all the bloody savages in this town. What I'm saying is, we're going to solve the brown people crisis. <laughs> Not gay sex. It, Q, it's always sunny. It's truly amazing how little is said in this one, though. I, I, I mean, this is junk mail. It was damn hard to get letters around back in those days, so you wouldn't expect it. But this is the epistolic equivalent of you may already be a winner. <laughs> right? Junk mail. This is ridiculous. I, I have a Nigerian prince cousin. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Sweet there, there's letter. some vague, like, Bigger you know, thieves should probably stop stealing shit stuff in Chapter 4. But other than that, I can't even tell you what the hell this one was about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if this was meant to be a lesson, because that would be stupid and awful. But it sounded like he was saying... Like, you guys are god slaves now, so start acting like it. This is a classy plantation, right? <laughs> that seemed to be the message of chapter well, four, anyway. Even when it tries to drill down and offer some advice, it's stuff like, this is chapter five, verse 11. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Oh, well. Genius. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Same chapter, verse 15. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise Oh, wait. Um, wait wise or unwise? Wise? Yeah. Which, yeah. You said it was which it was, it was wise. It was it's wise. wise. Not yeah. unwise. Wise. Uh-huh. Um, thanks for that rock hard, actionable specificity there, you fake Paul. <laughs> right. Well, the I, hell? but there is some specific misogyny in mm. there uh, about how wives should shut the fuck up and do what they're told. But that's that's almost background noise at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, to Ephesians' credit, it does mildly suggest you shouldn't beat your wife, which is Slightly. about as progressive as you're going to get in this motherfucker. Apparently, so take what yeah. I can get. <laughs> I'm sure all the wives appreciate that mildly suggested guideline, <laughs> but it's easy for it to get lost in the middle of the discussion about how 
your husband is allowed to rape you just like Jesus is allowed to rape the whole church. They recently <laughs> used that analogy, by the way. I didn't make that. That's in the Bible. <laughs> I can rape you, same as Jesus yeah. raping everybody. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. What's, what's the difference, you know? Savior rapes and, everybody. And then we get this great advice from, uh, for uh, slaves about how you should shut the fuck up and do what you're told since <laughs> God decided that you should be slaves and all. Which, by the way, is the cornerstone of Clarence Thomas libertarianism. <laughs> yes, as we learned earlier yeah. in the headlines. Ephesians 6. Who knows? <laughs> well, well, and then it flips that one. Like it's going to tell slave owners to be kind to their slaves in the next Claws or something, but it doesn't really. All it says is to stop threatening them. It doesn't say anything about not hitting them with a stick. So right. I guess if, if you just scary. if you just whack them without warning, <laughs> Jesus is cool with it. But if you yeah, give them any warning, God forbid. And on that great advice, it mercifully ends, and yet another stupid fucking epistle begins. And there is still a lot of these motherfuckers. I don't even want to say the number. It's that depressing. 16. I didn't Seriously? want you to say that number either. Ah, uh, fuck. Whiny life. letter format is great. I wish all books were like that. <laughs> Whiny letter format. Underused. <sighs> all right. Well, canon. I guess you guys know uh, that it's time to like wash that shit off your brain with smart stuff or something. Mm. Three weeks hence, we're going to do this again, I guess, with Philippians and Colossians. Gentile Manji. Booyah.